from FiberFlux. Welcome back to week two of the 2019 FiberFlux Spring Cow. We are hard at work on the Flowering Herbs Shawl, a beautiful spring shawl that is simple to make and really displays uh, an array of spring colors. It's just a fun, pretty shawl that we're working on. Last week, we talked about the supplies and the details of the project. So this week, we're gonna be jumping right in and starting on the V-stitch section of our shawl. So that's gonna include this neutral section, the linen color that we're using, and also the green uh, leaves and stems of our flowers. So we're gonna be covering the section before you get to the flower, and then those uh, sections just keep repeating for the remainder of the shawl. So next week, we are going to be jumping in and talking about the puff stitch flower rose, okay? So we're gonna just do the, the V-stitch section this week, and then next week, we'll talk about the puff stitch flowers. One thing I wanted to mention before we get into the tutorial is that if you haven't joined the Ravelry Crochet Along group, and I'll put the link down below, please hop on there. That's a great place to ask questions. There's a lot of wonderful people that jump in there and help each other. You can show off your, your photos. You can um, ask about colors, like different colors, how they work together. People um, are happy to give their opinion of you know any questions you may have. So if you haven't joined that group, it's a great uh, space for makers of all of these cows to come together and make things together. It's a great community of people. Also, if you share your work on on social media, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCow, and I'll put that above. Um, and that way, when you click on it, you can see collectively everybody's work, and it's a great place to share your images of your flowering herbs shawl. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started on the V-stitch section of our shawls. Okay, so for today's tutorial, we're going to be working the V-stitch section of our shawl. And the colors we're going to be needing today are the linen, which we're going to, is going to kind of be like the base color, the ground color that our flowers are going to be sort of growing out of. So this is the linen. And I talked about the supplies in greater detail last week for week one, the amounts of yarn, the colors, yarn substitutions, etc. But we're going to be using the linen and the polo today. And obviously you can use any colors you like, but um, I'm going to be using those. You'll also need a five millimeter H crochet hook and a pair of scissors today. So I went with the darker background so you can see the linen against the background. It's much easier to see. So let's jump right in. Now you're not gonna need your flower colors this week, but I wanted to grab them anyway just because they look pretty. But um, last week we talked a little bit about flower colors. You'll only really need one ball for your flower colors, but I wanted to add some additional colors, so I added some more yarn to mine. But as, in terms of yardage, you're only going to need one flower color ball, but that's not till next week, okay? So you have plenty of time to think about what colors you want to use. So grab your hook, and what we're going to do first is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so like I said before, we're going to begin with the V-stitch portion of our shawl. So the linen and the polo will be worked in V-stitch, and then the flowers will be worked in puff stitches. Okay, so the multiple that we need to get started is 3 plus 1. If you're not familiar with multiples, that is if you want to change the width of your project and make it a scarf or something narrower or much wider, you can even make a blanket out of this. It's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 and so forth to get the width that you like, and then you just add one more chain onto that. So 3 plus 1 is our multiple, and our starting chain is going to be 61 for this project. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, 10, 57, 58, 59, 60, and 61 okay so here is our starting chain and again if you're not into the width that we're doing you can change the multiple 
And also, I always get a lot of questions about the starting chain being too tight. A lot of times when we're starting to crochet, our tension is much different because we're learning and the chain can be too tight. You don't want your chain to be too tight because you need to work stitches into all these little chains. So if you're having a lot of trouble, just go up a hook size to the maybe like the 5.5 millimeter eye hook for the starting chain only and then go back down to the H hook for the remainder of the project. Okay, let's begin with row one. What we're gonna do is work a our first V in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four. So to make a V, we're gonna work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we're gonna do that for the whole project wherever there's a V, okay? So to make a double crochet though, wrap a yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? Then you're gonna chain one, then you're gonna work another double crochet all in that same chain, okay? Then we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and work a V into the next chain. So work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, all in that same chain. Okay, so now we have two V's and we also have a little turning chain back here, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. If you may have noticed by now, we're establishing a little bit of a sequence here. So skip two chains, we're gonna do this all the way across. Skip two chains and in the next chain, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains and in the next chain, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, moving right along, skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Whoops. Let's do that one again. Okay, then we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right, I'm gonna continue working all the way across, and when we get towards the end, not quite to the end, but when we get towards the end, we're gonna rejoin, and I'm gonna show you how to finish off the row and move on to row two. Okay, I worked all the way across. Now, when you have just three chains left, skip two chains and then just work one double crochet to finish off your row. Okay, just like that. So, row one should look like that. So let's move on to row two. So what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Then we're going to work a V in the V that we worked in the previous row. So when we worked our V's, we did a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. In the written pattern, in, excuse me, in the written pattern on the Fiberflux blog, I refer to that as the chain one space. By making a chain one, we created a space, so that's why it's called that. Um, but we're gonna work the V into that chain one space. So go ahead and work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And as you can see, the V's will start to stack on themselves, okay? So we're just working into the V's from the previous row, all the way across. So let's do a few together. So work double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that chain one space of the next V. Hop over to the next V, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Hop over to the next V, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. 
and just do this all the way across. So I'm going to keep going with my V's. You can see they're starting to stack. And then when we get to the end of this row, we'll rejoin again. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of row two, working that last V in the last V of the row. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then to finish off the row, you're going to locate that turning chain. You'll see that last V, and then there's a little series of chains where we did our turning chain. And you might have to kind of pull it apart to see. But in that topmost turning chain of the row, work a double crochet. Okay, so go ahead and work your double crochet. And it might be a little fiddly that first time you do it. Okay, and then just work your double crochet right into the top of that turning chain. And then row two is complete. So here is what the beginning looks like. So what we're going to do for rows three, four, five, and six, we're going to continue working this V stitch in the linen color. So just repeat row two that we just did. If you need to see it again, just simply back up the video. But we're going to do this for rows three, four, five, and six. And then we'll rejoin, and then we're going to switch to our green polo color and do the same V-stitch, but I'm going to show you how to switch colors in order to do that. So repeat row two for three, four, five, and six, and then we'll rejoin, and we'll add our stems and leaves to our flower. Okay, so we repeated row two when we did rows three, four, five, and six. So now you'll have a total of six rows. So we did our starting chain, row one, two, three, four, five, and six. So for row seven, we're gonna start working the leaves of our flowers. So we're gonna be repeating row two once again, but we're gonna work it in this polo green color. So what we need to do is cut our yarn. Now, if there's a way that you prefer to join yarn, please feel free to do that. I like to just cut it, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it all the way through, and then we can put the linen yarn aside for now. And then grab the green, whatever color you're using for the leaves and stems of your little flowers. And just grab a little bit of that yarn. And then where you fastened off that little knot that you did, there will be a loop. That's the last stitch of the row. So insert the hook, and actually let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more closely. So uh, this last stitch here, insert your hook into that. Now hook your new yarn on. Again, if you have a preferred way, just do that. And pull the new yarn through and then just tie it right on. And then we'll deal with those tails later. Okay, so just tie that on. And then what we're gonna do is just continue uh, to repeat row two. Same thing we've been doing, but we're using the green to get those little leaves and stems established. So once again, uh, pull up a loop, and then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. Again, we're just repeating row two, and turn. And we'll get started on that, just to show you. And then in that first V stitch, work a V into that one. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Double crochet into the next V, chain one, double crochet and so forth. So just to work a V into each V all the way across, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and work that across and then once we get towards the end of that row, I'm going to show you how the end of the row looks after we've completed it, okay? So just keep working your V's all the way across. Same thing we've been doing, we're just doing it in a different color. Okay, we're just finishing up row 7 with our green yarn. It's starting to get that nice little pop of color. And there you have it. So rows one through seven are complete, and that concludes week two of our crochet alongs. We learned how to make the base or the ground, I guess, in which the flowers are growing out of. And then we got these little leaves established. Now next week, we're going to learn for week three, we're going to learn how to incorporate some flower colors. Um, now again, you only need one ball of this for your, for your flower color. Let me uh, zoom out just a little bit. You only need one ball of this for your flower color, but I'm going to be using multiple colors. So in terms of yardage, you only need one ball, but I wanted to do lots of colors because springtime is always a burst of 
you know, color and flowers. And so I wanted to really incorporate all those fun colors, but you really only need a ball of this. So when we come back, we're gonna learn how to uh, make some puff stitch flowers in the top. And then we can continue on and work our, uh, the repeats of our stitches. And then in week four, we're gonna learn how to do some finish work and add some finishing touches to our piece. So if you haven't joined the Ravelry group, I strongly encourage you to go on there all you need, it's a free account to join Ravelry, and then just look for the Fiber Flux Cal group. And in there, you can share photos, you can ask people what they think about your colors. A lot of people show their work in progress. There's so many helpful people in there that are like veteran crocheters that jump in and help. It's just a really wonderful, positive place where uh, the makers of the Fiber Flux Crochet Alongs hang out. We have some other ones going on right now, so check those out too. So week three, we're gonna learn how to make these beautiful puff stitch flowers and incorporate them into our shawl. So that is the V stitch portion of our crochet along. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.